Welcome to a basketball packed day in the Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio. We'll get to part two of Rachel Bedell's senior sit down later, but first we lead off with more analysis of Devin Marble and crew's big win over Purdue Sunday. The Hawks have been one of the best teams in the country when it comes to getting to the free throw line, but after a three game skid, all it took was getting back to what made them successful early on in the year to get back on track. I took a look at how the Hawks were able to close out the Boilermakers. It was back to the basics for Fran McCaffrey's squad Sunday against Purdue after losing three straight games, which meant they needed to get back to the free throw line. We had longer possessions, and by doing that, we were able to drive the ball, throw it inside, and get fouled. You know, so when we're going down the stretch with a, with a, with a short, or a small lead, I should say, you're getting two shots every time, and that, that's critical. Iowa with the lead in the final seconds, forcing Purdue to send more players back to the line with the hope that Iowa would miss. In an effort to go after Iowa's worst free throw shooter, Purdue head coach Matt Painter made sure to have his team intentionally foul if Gazelle was handed the ball. You know, I needed to knock down some free throws down the stretch to kind of ice the game, and, you know, I missed a couple, but I was able to um, knock them down when they counted. In the final minute, they sent Gazelle, who shoots 64% from the line, to the line three times where he hit five of six of his free throws to help seal the win for the Hawks. He's assuming he's going to miss some free throws. But you keep fouling him, he's going to put you away. I mean, you know, he's missed some this year, yes, but they're, they're isolated situations typically. It's not like he's, he's missed seven out of eight. You, know, you can expect him to make seven out of eight. Iowa by far leads the Big Ten in free throws, making 609 this season. Though there's still work to be done for McCaffrey and company in converting those free throws. Iowa only ranks fifth in the Big Ten in free throw shooting percentage at 73%. But getting to the line worked in Iowa's favor this time, ending their losing streak with an 83-76 victory over Purdue. Jalen Socek, Daily Iowa TV Sports. The Hawks have two more games left before regular season play ends. Rachel Bedell finishes up her conversation with the three seniors before they play the last two regular season conference games of their careers. Zach, I mean, your teammates have really been there for you. You know, you've dealt with a lot of stuff with the fans lately. So can you kind of just talk me through a little bit what was going on that day? I know it was a rough game. You know what I mean? Zach's one of the hardest play, <laughs> playing players to come through Iowa history. So clearly he, he goes all out for the program. He loves the fans. So, you know, we don't, we don't got to comment on that. Fran made a really big statement um, in the press conference after Purdue about Dev possibly being Big Ten Player of the Year. Zach and Mel, what do you guys kind of have to say about your teammate in that aspect of the game? I mean, I definitely think he's uh, one of the most valuable players in Big Ten. Uh, I mean, he makes clutch shots for us. He's, he's always making plays, uh, you know, getting other people open. And, uh, you know, just this whole year he's been, he's been our go-to guy. And um, I think anytime you look at a most valuable player, something like that is, uh, you know, you have to look at Dev, and he's definitely, you know, fits the mold. I mean, I definitely would say so, just because, like, it's like he's our lifeline on the perimeter, so to speak, doesn't have really a weakness, can do everything. Uh, when it comes to big games, he always shows up. You know, he, he, he plays his best when the competition and the stakes is the highest. And like I said, you know, he's not just a scorer. Some of the players just score. Dev does it all. Score, steals, assists, just a smart player. Like, you know, I just, I just see everything. And our climb has been because of him leading us in such a great way. So, you know, I just think he's well-deserving of the award. And Dev, what are you thinking last couple of games going into postseason? How are you going to help keep leading the team throughout the end of your career here at Iowa? Uh, I just want to keep getting wins, you know. I got told the guys in the back, uh, the, the best thing you can have right now is, is getting wins and getting to the NCAA tournament, something that none of us have been able to take part in, and this is our last opportunity to do so. What is y'all's expectations going into postseason and just everything in the next couple of weeks? Um... Well, for us, it's, well, right now we're fighting for that Big Ten uh, fourth seed in the tournament, which is, uh, I think, big in the sense of uh, one less game you have to play. So it's one game you're already ahead of everybody else of trying to get the, to the championship. So uh, it's big in that sense. Um, when it comes to NCAA tournament seed, and, uh, I'm just thankful to be there and whoever they put in front of us. Uh, uh, it's just going to be a battle, to be honest. I could care less if I'm a 16 to, to 4, whatever they put us in, that is fine with me. Thank you guys for joining me, and good luck for the rest of the season. That's all for tonight's show. Tune in tomorrow for another edition of What It Takes. But for now, back to you at the desk.